It's the height of the summer music festival season, and the crowds are ready to go wild. But the news of two more deaths at a traveling electronic dance festival just last month has organizers worried about the illicit substances some festival goers are bringing in. This is an illegal psychedelic drug called 2CD. Mix it with the right chemical and you'll see the same colors every time. It's called spot testing, a simple method for identifying unknown substances and now being used in the most unlikely places. Yeah, purple to black is uh, MDMA, highlighter yellow is bath yeah. salts. What, close, shake it around? Close the lid and just agitate it a bit. And bath salts. Is that what you got? <laughs> yellow bath salts? That's bath salts. <laughs> Drug testing kits designed to help people test the purity of their recreational drugs are making the rounds at music festivals all over the country. It is MDVP. As these tests show, buyers often have no idea what they're really getting. One increasingly common and dangerous adulterant is bath salts or cathinones. Close it and shake it. Yellow. So what is that? Bath salts. Bath salts. Okay, let's not take bath salts. <laughs> oh shit. We just wasted like a hundred bucks. That's, I'm fine with that. I'd rather not take bath salts. Yeah. The kits are made by an anonymous organization called the Bunk Police. It's run mostly by volunteers who travel from festival to festival, selling kits directly to consumers of illegal drugs. Uh, this is my office right here. Adam Ochter, which isn't his real name, is the group's founder. Although a little bit outdated is one of our best friends right here. We do have the 2014 edition, but this is the Drug Identification Bible. And what's in here? And it has all kinds of interesting information about every single drug you could possibly imagine. We actually used some of these ideas to get our test kits into uh, music festivals. In his first on-camera interview, he took America Tonight on a tour of his home, now also a makeshift laboratory. Uh, breaking good, not breaking bad. <laughs> Now we're going to mix the dry chemical with the wets. He says he devotes almost every waking minute to the organization, researching new methods and spreading the word about the risks of adulterated drugs. Part business and part mission, the bunk police is a new player in what's called harm reduction, giving practical information and tools to help people make safer decisions about drug use. So in theory, I can go to a festival, a music, concert, rave, whatever, buy a pill of ecstasy, MDMA, and use one of your test kits to see if it's what that dealer has claimed that it is. Right. And then make the decision if I want to put it in my body or not. Yes. Similar to testing kits used by law enforcement to identify illegal substances in the field, Octor's kits provide information that's hard to come by in the murky world of illegal drugs. The demand was just absolutely insane, especially once people started to realize what was actually out there. At this time of the year, Octor says he sells thousands of kits per week. Sean Dunnigan was an intelligence analyst with the Drug Enforcement Agency for more than a decade. He now advocates for drug policy reform. Profit is made by volume in the illegal drug industry. And so, you know, everything is adulterated with something. Everything that you buy on the street is adulterated with something. The only question is, you know, how much and are the adulterants dangerous? Dunnigan says the risks of taking adulterated drugs is even higher when they're purchased in environments like music festivals. Drug consumers who are buying from, uh, from dealers that, with whom they have no prior relationship, transient markets like music festivals, there's really no reason whatsoever that a, a drug dealer wouldn't sell a bag of glass to a 14-year-old kid and claim it to be some, some illegal drug. What are all the different ingredients you've seen? Oh, it'd, it'd take me 10 minutes to sit here and list them all. Uh, the most common are the cathinones, um, the bath salts, MDPV, um, ephedrone, that sort of thing. We do see a lot of amphetamines, methamphetamine. The testing kits have drawbacks. They aren't 100% accurate, and it's difficult to detect the components in drug mixtures. Octor is researching a technique called thin layer chromatography, or TLC, which he hopes will solve those problems. People are making better choices about what they're putting in their body because of your kits. Absolutely, without a doubt. There's no question in my mind. I've watched the culture change over the last few years. 
A rash of well-publicized overdoses at music festivals last year also helped raise awareness. At this year's Mad Decent Block Party in Brooklyn, organizers set up tight security and banned a long list of seemingly harmless items like cups, chapstick, and gum. There's definitely a good amount of people who do take um, illegal substances, but uh, I mean, they're taking it at their own risk. I was at Electric Zoo last year where um, two people died. One of those people was Jeffrey Russ, a 23-year-old from Rochester who collapsed into a seizure and died after consuming pills with a lethal combination of MDMA and bath salts. But despite stories like Russ, Ochter says most music festivals won't allow his kids onto the premises. The first year when we were doing this, we were very upfront trying to get permission from every single one of these um, and received absolutely nothing in response. And from there, we just decided to stop asking and start doing. Just going without asking? Yes. And sometimes that means smuggling in your testing kits? It means that every time. We bribe food truck owners to put it under their produce and drive them in. We put them in black duffel bags and throw them over fences in the middle of the night. We do whatever it takes. The bunk police operate in a legal gray area, skirting the edges of state paraphernalia laws. And festival organizations themselves are subject to the Federal Rave Act, which can penalize promoters for sanctioning any kind of drug use on their premises. They could potentially have their land seized, their company seized, something like that. And they think that having us there testing substances means that they are allowing drug use to go on. The bunk police isn't the first organization to offer drug testing kits, though they may be the most aggressive. They're part of a larger harm reduction movement. Harm reduction is kind of accepting that drug use and drug abuse and addiction are at their core public health problems. The goal should really be minimizing the harm, right? Making overdoses less common, making them less dangerous, um, s slowing the spread of disease. You know, all these things that reduce the harms that come from drug use, you know, rather than just putting people in jail. You've helped people test hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of drugs. What's been your general takeaway from doing that? Most of what's out there is not what people say it is. And we just want people to know what they're taking before they take it, or more importantly, before they buy it. Christoph Putzel, Al Jazeera, Denver.